Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brad Free. This is the SoCal Report, sponsored by Pachanga Resort and Casino. And we're looking forward in this segment to the Saturday and Sunday stakes races and a couple of very interesting maiden races. And we'll start off with race number seven on Saturday. Two-year-old fillies, you know I like this division out here in California because it seems to be extremely deep, notwithstanding the attrition from Surrender Now, Saudi Chroma, and Varanasi. But some good ones have emerged last week in the Sorrento, and they might emerge in race number seven. It's a five furlong race for two-year-old fillies, and the morning line favorite is number five, She's Funny. A daughter of Tappet out of multiple graded stakes winner, Hysterical Lady. She's trained by Richard Mandela, and I talked to Mandela early this week about She's Funny and asked him about expectations going into her career debut. And Mandela's quote, she's fast. We'll find out how fast on Saturday. Bottom line is, She's Funny is well-meant first time out. By Tappet, well-bred, top and bottom. She should come out firing. But my top selection in the race happens to be the seven to two second choice on the morning line. And that's number three, Beyond Pleasure. If you're just a basic student of pedigrees, that's all I am, you must have noticed by now that first crop sire overanalyze is off to an unbelievable start. He already has 12 two-year-old winners in his first crop. Early this week, he was tied with the late scat daddy. So overanalyze off to a terrific start as a stallion in his first crop, and he has another one in number three, Beyond Pleasure, a daughter of Overanalyze, whose workout on Wednesday morning was, as trainer Bob Hess said, quote, wow. Kent Desormo was aboard for that three furlong gate work in 35 and four. She's fast, she's cooperative, she's only going five furlong, she's probably not gonna be a Kentucky Oaks candidate down the line, but she is well meant on Saturday in race number seven, that's number three, Beyond Pleasure. My top selection, recognizing that number five, She's Funny, could be all the rage by the time they get to post. As for number eight, Fantastic Girl, talked to her trainer, John Sadler, kind of got the impression that maybe Saturday was not the right day for her. She's making her career debut, a daughter of Pioneer of the Nile. They have high hopes for this filly, but maybe not so high on Saturday. Could she run in? Of course she could. But it looks like race number seven on Saturday is a two-horse race between a couple of very well-regarded first-time starters. She's funny, the three-to-one favorite on the morning line in my top selection. Number three, beyond pleasure by the terrific first crop sire, overanalyze. Okay, on to race number nine. It's the highlight of the day. Two-year-old Colts in the grade two best pal stakes. And the leader of the division so far, number one, run away. Impressive debut winner. Went back to Keeneland. He was going to work on, he worked on grass with the idea of maybe shipping to Royal Ascot. That did not work out. He came home and he dusted the field in the Santa Anita Juvenile back on July 3rd. He has trained well at Del Mar for his next start. Competition's going to get a little tougher from here on out. But run away is fast. He's sharp. He's quick enough to overcome the inside post. And by the way, the rail has been very good so far this meet at Del Mar. So as long as he gets through past the gap, okay, something Dre Fong couldn't do a couple of weeks ago, Runaway should take care of business if he can put away Serengeti. Serengeti is a maiden winner back on June 25th for Bob Baffert. He added blinkers and he won by 11 lengths. He earned a 74 buyer speed figure. I thought the figure could have come back perhaps a little bit higher. Doesn't really matter. He's fast, he's sharp, he's quick, he's training well. Baffert always is loaded with two-year-olds in summer, and Serengeti at 9-5 to five will give Runaway a battle. There's a potential upsetter in here. If you want to gamble on a price, he's not the most likely winner, but he ran well first time out, and I'm referring to number six, Fleetwood. He finished second behind Gracida. That was on July 22nd at Del Mar, he was no match for Gracida, a custom for Carlos' tr uh, son, trained by Doug O'Neill, who's headed for the Del Mar Futurity on closing day. But Fleetwood ran well in defeat. He finished more than four lengths clear of third. And if you go back and watch the replay again, you'll see Jockey Kent Sormo, when they're crossing the wire, he's kind of patting Fleetwood on the neck as if, nice job, dude. We're going to get him next time. DeSormo, who rode Fleetwood, was very impressed with his Colts, debut and Fleetwood by the way is trained by Kent DeSormo's brother Keith DeSormo so the DeSormo's have a whole lot of two-year-olds this year Keith DeSormo in particular and Fleetwood he could get a good trip he should move up with the race under his belt 
don't let Fleetwood slip away at a price. He's listed at 10 to 1. I think his odds are going to come down a little bit. But this is a good colt, and he has a chance to maybe spring an upset over Runaway, the horse to beat, and Serengeti, his main rival. Okay, race number 10 is a one-mile grass race for two-year-old maidens. And number five, Kazan, is the morning line favorite, and he might be a good thing. Here's why. Trainer Simon Callahan strictly gave him a race first time out July 1st at Santa Anita. He wasn't really ready to run, and he ran okay. He finished an okay third, finished third by three lengths, Kazan did. But since then, Callahan said this colt is more mentally turned on. Sometimes a young horse needs a race to figure it all out. And since that race, Kazan has figured it out. He's training with purpose. He should move forward second time out. And so should number two, Data Central. Keith DeSarmo, Kent DeSarmo. Data Central finished fourth behind Kazan. Whoever wins this race is probably going to end up being among the leading contenders for the Del Mar Juvenile Turf a little bit later on this meet. Okay, on to Sunday. A real quick peek at the Sunday Stakes race, and that's the Grade 3 Rancho Bernardo for Philly Mare Sprinters going six and a half furlongs. And Sky Diamonds might be one of the better claims that trainer Bill Spar has ever made. He claimed her for $40,000 Last summer at Del Mar, this year she has emerged as one of the top Philly Mare sprinters on the West Coast, if not the top. Her most recent win was in the Great Lady M, and she killed the field. She won by more than two lengths with a career-high buyer speed figure of 99. This race, the Rancho Bernardo, has been the target ever since then, and if Sky Diamonds can reproduce her Los Alamitos form at Del Mar, she will be tough to beat. But she faces a tougher group, a tough group. Let's put it this way, that way. Number two, Bendable. She had been off since last fall. She returned in the grade three Desert Stormer in mid-June. And she also scored an impressive win, a career best number, a 97 buyer speed figure. She sat off the pace. She drew away by a length and a half. And she is good. She's won four of six. You better believe she's good. In her only other two starts, she finished second and third. So Sky Diamonds and Bendable, the horses to beat in the Rancho Bernardo. Number four, Constellation has speed, and so does number one, Rockport Babe. So the versatility of Sky Diamonds and Bendable make her, them the top selections in race number six on Sunday. Sky Diamonds and Bendable in the Rancho Bernardo. But on Saturday, it's all about Runaway, Serengeti, and maybe an upsetter, Fleetwood in the grade two best pal. I'm Brad Free. This has been the SoCal Report sponsored by Pachanga. Thanks for watching. See you next time.